For many developers, uh, the typical day starts with putting on a developer shirt, sitting down in front of your IDE, and then starting to work through uh, some of the programming language that you want to use for your application. Whether it's software, it could be a simple code. Uh, in my case, I do a lot of data, data analysis, sometimes with R or Python. Well, these days, your workflow is starting to include AI. And I'm going to talk about Claude and one of its feet, which is an AI tool, and one of its features is called Artifacts. So back up and explain why this is important is because a lot of times with AI, you have opportunities to refine your ideas much more quickly. But there's a certain smart approach to take it, and we're going to talk about that today. So first of all, what is Claude? Well, Claude is just like Gemini and ChatGPT. It's a large language model. In fact, it's a family of large language models that was introduced in March of 2023 by Anthropic. Uh, the latest version is called 3.5. And in my example today, I'm going to actually not only use 3.5, but use one of its features called Artifacts. So what is Artifacts? Artifacts is a tool that allows you to look at content as it's being created um, when the large language model is responding to your query. And we're going to go through those steps. But it's a really big benefit. It allows you to see um, what the large language model is creating and how that large language model is responding to your prompt. So we're going to start with a very simple prompt today. So I'm in front of um, Claude, and I have a prompt saying, create a custom surface um, survey. And we're going to imagine it's for an athletic shoe retailer chain. And this is supposed to be a simple survey. So we're going to ask for it to create a survey consisting of seven questions with and we're going to assume that two of the questions are a true or false uh, qu um, question now notice that this is a while this is a very simple prompt it should still give some details out a little bit about what you're looking for um, I've put the sort of context of what sort of uh, application that the survey is going to be in um, I also mentioned that there's customer service and of course the parameters seven questions and even mentioned that there's two types of questions so this is a good uh, starting point as a thought starter and so as you can see here um, there's two things going on you're seeing a panel that appears on the right hand side and then a description on the left and it appears very very quickly so what this is doing is that is give this is the actual prompt right here on the left and then on the right is artifacts uh, what artifacts will do is that it basically shows what the output is that i'm looking for now in this example i'm looking for a survey so instead of having that output appear right in the middle of the um, prompt response uh, that survey is appearing right here in the artifact so it's a medium that's usually used for things where you know that you're trying to A, create some sort of medium. So it could be for images, it could be for documents, um, it could be for work, for flow charts, maybe diagrams. And you'll see in a minute, it's also used for programming. So it's a good, anything that's iterative where you know you're gonna make some sort of edits to, that's what artifacts is supposed to be used for. Doing this helps you to see what the large language model is crafting. Um, in real time, and it also helps you under, helps you to start thinking about how to refine that um, suggestion as well. So let's but let's say this for argument's sake that I kind of like how this is set up. At least it gives me these uh, specific um, question examples. Like, like for example, on a scale of one to five, one being poor, five being excellent. How would you rate your overall shopping experience? Um, how likely are you to recommend our store to friends or family? So I'm liking um, how this is forming. So it gives a really good baseline here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and ask it to create this survey using um, serve, uh, Shiny App and Shiny Surveys. And for those of you who don't know what that is, Shiny Apps is just an app built with our programming language. And Shiny, and Shiny Surveys um, is also another uh, library or app a um, um, library that's used to create apps based off the shiny app app pretty much a tongue twister but there you go so let's get let's put this together so i'm going to say uh please create a survey app in our programming based on 
our survey use shiny and shiny surveys use bind event function in the code now I'm going to explain that last sentence in a, in a moment but let's go ahead and run this and so now what it's doing is that we're seeing the prompt on the left hand side saying yes I'm happy to put together a survey and then we're actually seeing the actual code here on the right hand side so you can see here uh, in shiny with in shiny apps and shiny surveys you need to have a data frame which contains the questions and option choices so you see that right here there's actually a column here with the questions a column here um, it's called options but it's the same thing it's basically listing out what the choices are um, another column indicating the input type to tell us if it's numeric or integer that type of thing um, an input ID um, and then also other parameters here and these will these come into a data frame which then is used by the shiny surveys um, and also by used by the shiny app library to create the app so you have the user interface here um, the server um, function here and then finally the last piece of the shiny code which actually produces that app now there's a couple things to keep in mind when you're doing this number one um, you notice that when I put together my query I actually called out uh, the use of bind event and the reason why I specified this function uh, I think it's good to do this from time to time is that a lot of times when you're using these AI tools they've been trained up to a certain date and they may or may not include certain functions that have been part of maybe a recent update so you want to keep that in mind in this case for Claude its training date was April 20 April 2024 so it's likely that it will have bind event in here um, but I called it out because back according to within shiny the shiny uh, library there was an update back I think for version 1.6 where bind event was used to replace two other functions so I'm just kind of telling it to say hey please use this function because this is what is the latest syntax that's being used so sometimes it's good to call that out um, another thing to keep in mind is um, keeping in mind the language that you want to use I mentioned our programming uh, many times uh, gen AI tools will use Python but it is always good to call out the language that you want um, and definitely call out any dependencies or libraries that you want to use in this case shiny and shiny surveys was part of the deal and you can see here some of these things like in this case right here this is a pipe fun this is a pipe character um, that chains together two separate uh, functions this is kind of an older style pipe uh, character there's actually a newer one from the newer version of R um, 4.4 and onward so that leads into my next point when you want to use this um, this code you still would want to run that in an IDE uh, just to kind of make it make a check um, but you still want to make sure that that um, you're capturing or making sure that you just make the assumption that you need to make refinements and you just want to make sure that you're capturing some of the things that um, you need to have now you can go back and ask for specific changes such you can ask for it to refactor um, and indicate but when you do that you must indicate specifically what it is that you want to refactor same thing if you get error messages um, if you have an error message you'll need to not only type in um, that this is an error message but also provide this uh, code snippet where that error has occurred doing that you can get some uh, callbacks from um, get some responses from Claude and some callbacks and it kind of helps the workflow a little bit now Claude is not the only platform that you that you can do this with it's one of the better ones out here right now between it chat GPT uh, and Gemini however there are also IDEs which are currently um, implementing some level of AI into as an AI copilot and the most obvious one is github copilot but there are also some other ones as it's Amazon Q there's even an IDE called cursor which will not only um, have a copilot within the uh, environment but you can also pick which language model that you want to use but keep all this in mind this sort of workflow in mind when you're working with Claude and our programming or any AI or any 
programming language and you'll come up with not only a faster workflow that will get the main pieces on the table but then you also be able to get some things actually done much faster i hope this helps you out very much